Your podcasting feed was just hacked by Left Handed Radio. Left Handed Radio. Left Handed Radio. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast for laundry. I'm your host, Brett Davis. This is a podcast that's meant to be listened to while you're doing your laundry. And if you're not doing that, that's okay. That's just fine. Uh, we've got a very special guest. Uh, uh, I'd say America's sweetheart, oh, Cole Escola. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you. Cole, you may know from your shows, your, your wild live shows at Joe's Pub and the show Difficult People and mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. Any, anything that you um, feel represents you best? Um, at Home with Amy Sedaris. Yes. Um, I was on Wings for several seasons. Wings. The uh, yes, the, the big sitcom. one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, check out Wings. I think it's on Hulu. It's uh, you can actually order the DVDs directly from my website. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, check it out. And that's about an airport, right? Yeah, it's an airport. It it was all improv. Cool, like yeah. Christopher Guesty, or more just like loose. It was everyone was shot separately. Um, so we we'd never shot together. Uh-huh. Um. It was just, I would go stand in front of a camera and they would say, all right, let's just talk about whatever you want. And then they would just sort of edit, take all the, the people's uh, individual Im- improvisations and try to um, construct a story. That's that. incredibly advanced. Yeah. And that was, what, early 90s? Yeah. Yeah. Late 80s, early 90s. Wow. Mid 90s. Yeah. I love Wings. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, Cole from Wings mm-hmm. and... Uh, 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 I hope you like doing laundry right now or in your basement, which is where you do your laundry. That's right. Um, I have laundry, uh, in, in my apartment building. It's, um, convenient, but inconvenient. Um, how, how so? Well, I mean, y- you would think it's great to have, it, it's not as, as, as good as in unit because mm-hmm. you, you have to like put on clothes to go outside and go downstairs to the basement. And so it's not just, it's not as relaxed as you would, you would hope. Um, it's, you know, you get dressed. It's like, I might as well go to a laundromat. Well, already this feels like the most personal podcast we've done so far. Well, I mean, cause I'm in your home building mm-hmm. at yeah. the very least. Yeah. I could just run upstairs and you enter don't, your home. You couldn't because I did, I knew, Obviously, I knew you were coming, so I locked the the door to my actual <laughs> apartment. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, well, let me do a little business. I'm just going to pull this out. Okay. All right. This is a bottle of Tide. Yeah. Um, if at any point during the show you don't like where the conversation is going, uh-huh. all you need to do is spin the bottle so that the label's facing away from you, and you can literally turn the Tide of the conversation. Why did you bring that? <laughs> what do you mean? Why did you bring that? I so mean, you that's can like, turn the tide of the conversation. But that's so heavy. That's like, that's like three gallons of laundry detergent. Yeah, I mean, I've had it in my backpack. It's fine. I usually walk around with it. Okay. Um, Sorry, hold on. I'm uh, just making sure that I set my washer for the right yep hot cold okay good well what are you washing today sheets nice Mm -hmm. i guess you probably did your laundry on your own schedule but sometimes sheets there's a whole wrench in the plan it's like i gotta wash my sheets too yeah well something even somebody like me uh i i find myself like oh no what did i do i forgot to you for wait you forget to how often do you wash your sheets about once a week once a week? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it gets stinky if you don't. Well, I do it once every couple of weeks. What do you do about the bottle? The what? Nothing. The what? Um, what do you, what do you? We're going to do a segment called, um, if you're, this is the, if you're, this is the first time you're listening to the show, we do some fun segments and one of them is called, what's your turge? Okay. Uh, mm, we're, uh, we're just going to do, we're going to throw some bumpers in there. So if you could hold for bumper. 
Okay. Cole, what's your turge? Um, I, I use uh, the the seven generations um, n- natural nice. organic. Yeah, that's a good choice. It's Thanks. good for the environment. Um, maybe not the best at cleaning your clothes. I'd say. How would okay? How would you know? Okay, um, I know. I I've experimented in my life. Okay, I mean, I guess you know you carry Tide with you. Well, Tide's number one. What do you like about it? I like the way it smells. I like the way it feels. I like the emotional connection I have to it. And mm-hmm. I, yeah, uh, it, it gives me options. Sometimes I carry the Tide Pods. I have a little pouch on my belt, and I, you know, can if I need to do some last minute laundry, and I don't have my you know big Tide bottle, I don't have to buy any because I just got the the pods in my pouch. <clears throat> All right. So uh, uh, this is a segment we mm-hmm. like to call Bleach Please. Mm-hmm. Hold for bumper. In Bleach Please, uh, this is uh, when you just talk about what makes you say Bleach Please. You mean when do I ask for bleach? No, like it's like sort of like a like a sassy like um, Bleach Please. I've never said that. Well, you maybe you said Bitch Please. No, I don't. It's kind of misogynist. But that's why we say bleach. Um, I'll tell you that I I use bleach when I I wash my my gym clothes. Okay. But uh, that's all I have to say on that. I think yeah. No, but I mean like like what what makes you go like ah oh, like bleach please? Again, I just I've never said that. I've never said any sort of iteration of that. I think you're misconstruing what. Bleach, please. Is no, it just I think something I, that like ex- I, I think I understand it exactly. I don't think you do though, because you keep. It's like there's nothing misogynist about it. There's it's just like bleach, please. Okay. How long does the segment last? It's. Uh, can I hold for the bumper, and does that mean it's over? No. You can turn the tide. I would, okay. but I will say we're only uh, seven minutes into the show. This is your first time listening to the podcast for laundry. It's a it's a fun show where a, a guest and I talk about laundry, and uh, one of the things I like to ask is, uh, "What are your early laundry memories?" This is just about laundry. Yeah, How, you do a whole podcast about just laundry. Yeah, it's called the podcast for laundry. But I thought it was just something you listen to while you're doing laundry. No, that'd be stupid. Okay. What was sorry? What what did you ask? Uh, so uh, where do you uh, uh like? Where do you pinpoint your earliest memory of laundry? Your first time, time um, you popped your laundry cherry. What? The earliest memory of laundry is fine. My mom did my laundry when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, lucky. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lucky. I'm very lucky that... Um, you know, some people don't have mothers at all. Um, yeah, that's true. Some people... Sometimes uh, their mothers are mean and make you do your own laundry. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, that instills a good work ethic. Mm-hmm. That's what I've always said. You have? Yeah. Um, so I my feel mom- like we're getting off with the wrong foot. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've maybe made it tense and I'm actively trying to make it relaxed and comfortable i think the more you push the more tense it is getting because i really am confused about the premise of this okay uh, uh so this is a, a something that you can listen to while you're doing your laundry but we're going to talk about laundry okay so if like maybe doing your laundry is a little boring right talking about it maybe not so much okay um yeah my my mom would do my laundry um you know, she worked during the week, so mm-hmm. she would sort of Saturdays were chore days for her, and um, she would do the laundry. And how did it make the house smell? It didn't um, make it smell any particular way. Um, hmm. Hey, well, what about the first time you popped your uh, the first time you did your laundry yourself? Um, I guess I was, you know, um, 
I, I don't remember. I, 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 there were probably, there's probably just some time where I, I just did the laundry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, I don't know. Not like when you went off to college and it was like this whole like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> no, it's do I pretty this? self-explanatory. I mean, you can see here on the buttons, um, you know. But like Ross and Rachel? And, what? Who? Ro- Ross and Rachel from Friends. Is this a Friends podcast? I'm not. No, but it's a Friends podcast if you want to. I mean, she didn't know how to do her laundry, so her and oh, Ross had. okay. And then that's. That's funny. Yeah, but then like they That's kinda, very funny. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to try and. Um, I need to take a breath. Okay. Um, I'm just going to answer your questions in earnest and um, hope that you get what you need out of it. Okay, well, the good news is my questions are done for the moment. Okay. Because, uh, Cole, you are known for your wild characters. Mm Mm-hmm. Unique, funny. Yeah. From an exciting point of view. Mm -hmm. You're you're a quick wit, but also your characters do have humanity to them. Absolutely. I have always wanted to create a character that is all about laundry. Mm Mm-hmm. I think you, I think it sounds like you have. Um, How so? Well, you seem pretty, I mean, you have Tide in your backpack. You're wearing that ridiculous belt with Tide pods tied with what looks like floss. It's, um, it's green twine, but yeah. Yeah. That scarf is made of dryer sheets, mm-hmm. used dryer sheets. I was hoping you would notice yeah, I mean you're holding it in front of my face, so mm-hmm. um, they don't know that though, right? Um, so I I would say maybe just draw on your um existing blatant love of laundry. Well, no, this is just me. It's not a character, but uh, what I I do want to do is create maybe like like a you know snuffle up, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know how it was just this big like mammoth. Uh, I think. Snephalopagus is a female. She. Um, she was was this big mammoth, kind mm-hmm. of full of hair and stuff. So I was like, what if Snephalopagus was not made of flesh and bone and fur, but instead of dirty clothes? Mm-hmm. So like a laundry monster type thing. Some would say a monster, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's funny. That's very funny. I want you to be the embodiment of the laundry monster. What do you mean? Like, I want you to become this character. And I think we'll, t- today we'll workshop kind of what works about the character, what maybe needs some work because mm-hmm. you're truly a one of a kind performer. Thank you're welcome. you. And I think no one would <laughs> bring to life this character better than you. Um, Please. Okay, what do we, you want me to dress up or? No, 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 no. I, I'm I'm sure this character is going to be CGI when it exists. So you want me to do a voice? Not necessarily. I want a little more than a voice. Like so, uh, let's t- talk about how you develop your own characters. Okay. So, uh, what's a character? You got Joyce Connor. You got the the mom character. Sure. You do Bernadette Peters mm-hmm. uh, a lot. So like, where 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 does Square One for like a character that's maybe wholly original? Um, well, usually I pray and, um, I ask God to sort of, um, guide me. I, you know, I say, dear God, um, can we do this for real instead yeah. of an example? Oh, oh, okay. Um, okay. yeah. Um, what do you mean? You want me, you want me to start from square one? How would I, s- are you asking me to start to build a character from? Scratch. Yes, with my monster. help. Yeah. Okay. So um, we start with a prayer. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just. <clears throat> Dear God, um, you can keep your pants on. Um, I okay. didn't want to get them dirty. All right. Uh, well, you don't have to kneel. Okay. Dear God, Dear God. Thank, you thank you for the Second Amendment. Um, please guide me 
toward the most honest, um, sincere. I'm sorry. I really don't like you repeating while I'm talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, okay. I don't pray. It's okay. Uh, um, the laundry is laundromat is my church. Okay. Um, please guide me toward the, the, the most honest, sincere, um, character that you can. And may I, um, delight you with my characterizations. Amen. Good. I like that. Uh, you want God to like this character just well, as yeah. much as everyone. That's else. what I do it for. Nice. I'm not performing for the audience, you know? Yeah. That's a, that's. I'm performing for the audience, capital A. Oh yeah. Or capital A dash, 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 E. It's an audience, but. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's in the way. Yeah. Um, so, so, okay. So now that we, okay. So now that I'm. Laid a foundation. Laid a foundation. Um, okay. So. What's this character? I mean, this is a little awkward because this is your idea and usually character is my idea. Okay. So, well, where 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 do you start after, once you've done the prayer? Okay, you've is is mm-hmm. it kind of ever based on a specific person or is it sort of an amalgam of things that it's you want to see? Sort of just like a a voice in in my head or my imagination. Okay. So I've I've described maybe physically what this laundry monster sure. looks like. Yeah, maybe but I don't want that me. to influence you necessarily. Well, I sort of need it. Okay. So it's a snuffleupagus type. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a trunk. I think those could be trouser legs. Um, okay. There's a, Both legs are the trunk, or it's one leg, and the other leg is sort of a part of the face. I think the other leg's part of the face. Okay, so the other leg is like the upper lip, you think? Yeah. Yeah. That would make the most sense. Sort of wound. Okay. Yeah. Curved. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, m- maybe like a, a t-shirt mm-hmm. um, that's hanging out from the back. What are like the eyes? Coiled up. So you haven't thought this through no. completely. Okay. I This is what I was hoping we would okay. do with our time. Um, I think the eyes, uh, no eyes. Okay. It's a blind creature. Okay. So a blind laundry creature. But not tragically blind, like meant to be blind. By God. Blind by design laundry creature. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So what voice comes to your mind? Uh, uh, Something sort of like this. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Uh, Sort of like a New York accent? Sort of. Sort of. Everybody loves Raymond. Oh, so it's... It's Brad Garrett. It's Brad Garrett, Robert Barone. Yeah. Okay. He would probably be the voice of it. If they made a movie, it would be him. It's going to be you. This is what you get for being a guest and helping me develop this, is that you're my partner 50-50 in this. Okay, but it's still Brad Garrett. That's fine. So uh, now we've got a voice, okay? Uh, where does this, where does this creature come from? Is it coming from a a laundry world, or maybe? I was born in the back of a car. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe was 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 there some like uh, divine intervention that made this? Well, what happened was there was a PE teacher at a small town high school and he got in a car accident with his three-year-old daughter and they died in the accident but they had laundry in the back seat and the laundry came to life and here I am. Okay, so this is maybe the dad, the PE teacher. No, this is just the laundry. Oh, okay, it was a, it was a witness to this Horrible accident. Yes, I watched them both take their last breaths. Ho oh, hum. And maybe, <laughs> maybe that's why it's blind by design. Yeah. Because it doesn't want to see something so sad ever again. No. You know, it's funny. I've always found something truly tragic about laundry sometimes. Just it's so lonely and sad sometimes. That's kind of how I feel, too. So that's why I'm going around p- 
picking up everyone's dirty laundry so they never have to do it. Well, that, but they should want to do it. Laundry's great. I'm going to scratch that from the character, if that's cool. What? Why? Because it's like, why would what favor would this monster be doing if he's taking everybody's dirty laundry? So that they don't have to be like you said lonely when they're when they're doing their laundry i mean sometimes it's good to be feel lonely that's what i've been told that's what my mom told me when she dropped me off at the laundromat and saying i feel lonely when i do this she says it's good to be lonely and then okay big cloud of uh smoke <laughs> is this part over no we're just getting started with the the, the character okay i'm S- not going to talk about my mom anymore I, I hope you don't. So, okay, so you don't like that the character... I, I, I'm I sorry, but I think that it's important that the character eats other people's dirty laundry. Okay, but maybe he clean, cleans it with them. Sure, this is 50-50. I don't want to... Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Forever Dog listeners. It's Meatball and Big Dipper. That's right. I'm here, too. So this year, we have seen what staying silent can do. Mm. Oof. Woof. (laughs) And right now, you have an unprecedented opportunity to speak up. We all do. So make sure to cast your vote and be heard this November. It's never too early to register to vote, but it might be too late before you know it. Right. So we want to help make it easy for you to register and have a plan for November 3rd or before if you're doing early voting as an option in your state. Yes, Queen, please do. Right. It's important to vote so that your country can finally reflect your values. So go to foreverdogpodcast.com slash vote to register. Check on your registration often and learn how to fill out your ballot. That's right. If you haven't registered to vote yet, this is a really easy way to do it. And uh, it feels like it's not outside your comfort zone because you love podcasts. You listen to our podcast and you can do it very easily at foreverdogpodcast.com slash vote. And remember, each state is different. So make sure you are following your local rules and regulations for where you register to vote. Yeah, and take care of yourselves and take care of each other and make sure to vote because there's a demon in the office. <laughs> it's Jonathan Braylock, James the Third, and Gerard Milligan from Black, Black Men Can't, Can't Jump, Jump in Hollywood. Hollywood. On our podcast, we rate, review, and analyze films in the context of race. Discussing Hollywood's diversity and representation issues. And talk to experts in the field. Experts like ourselves, because we're working actors and writers. So we know what we're talking about. Except James. Mm Mm-hmm. We vary it up between huge blockbuster hits and beloved cult classics, such as Higher Learning, Independence Day, Loose, Sorry to Bother You, Blade, Parasite, Blind Spotting, Hustlers, and Cats. Yes, y'all, we reviewed Cats. And don't forget Hancock. Which may or may not be a good movie. It's not a good movie. So please check out and subscribe to Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood. Only on the Forever Dog Podcast Network. And we'll all try to figure out if Hancock is a good movie or not. Together. New episodes every Monday. Can you afford to not know what left-handed radio is? You probably answered no, right? That's, that's where you landed? So, uh, you know, we never settled on a name. We're saying this character, this monster. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you like? What kind of comes to mind when you think of Jesus Christ? His name is going to be Jesus Christ. Yeah, I feel like that. Im- that has implications. That this character is no, and then every time someone says Jesus Christ, that's where I come in. I think I feel like that's going to be a very confusing aspect of the character because Okay, you're really I I'm I don't not trying understand. to fence you in. No, this. I mean this is part of the development process is being able to feel comfortable enough to to brainstorm. Okay. Well, I just want to feel comfortable voicing my voicing <sighs> your criticism. See, this is what I don't understand about about this is like like saying um you know, like, 
uh, you're you're getting married infringes upon my religious freedom. No, no, no. It's nothing like that. No, th- you're being a bigot. Jesus Christ is the name of the laundry monster. Yes. I just wanted to, you know, spitball a little bit about the name, but I no, think it's a great that's name. that's it. It's perfect. And people do wind up saying that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. It's recognizable. It would look great on the posters and like. I feel like you don't say Jesus Christ when you've got a laundry problem. Maybe it's like a, a deeper problem. So I feel like if yeah. Jesus Christ is showing up, Jesus Christ the monster um, is showing up and like like I said, there's there's some terrible tragedy and then he's like, let me take your laundry. Yeah. I feel like that might not be helpful. Oh, I completely disagree. I actually don't even, I don't think you're, you are you've already decided against it so you're not even you're not even thinking about it clearly so let's move on okay so well, his I, I guess jesus i guess christ. when there is a tragedy sometimes it only helps like hey if you jesus need help jesus christ the laundry monsters here oh okay that i love yeah a nice little jingle jesus christ the laundry, laundry monsters, monsters here, here. <laughs> yeah I love it. I love Great. it. Great. Uh, so Jesus Christ is going around. Um, so he's not from anywhere. He's from Earth. Yeah, he's from he. He was sort of. I, I guess this was would never be explained, but like subtextually, he is is born out of the um, the. Uh, he's born of horror. You know, he watched. This man and this young girl, three um, years old, you said, three years old, thro- like w- watched them die in a in a car. You know, you ever um, watch car accident videos? I don't. I watch them um, n- n- people throwing up on the news. Okay. So there's this horror that this character is born out of, and it just wants to inspire hope, or, or yeah, it just wants to pick up pick up the pieces Mm -hmm. it wants to help people clean up you know yeah when you put it like that i feel bad about voicing any concern well it's it's about like you know he wants people to have time um for things that more important than laundry you know like don't don't waste time on laundry like let me take care of that and you just bond with each other that's yeah that's that's what i always offer my friends when they're dealing with the death in the family. I'm like, let me do your laundry. Hmm. Did people take you up on that? One has. One? Oh. Mm-hmm. And I did a great job. I bet. So what he what is what is Jesus Christ the monster doing with everyone's laundry? I think maybe he, maybe he's taking them to the laundromat? No. I think he eats the dirty laundry and then you know, it's sort of a parable. You know, did you do you ever read uh, Thich Nhat Han? No. He's this great um, Zen Buddhist writer and teacher, and in one of his books, I think it's called Pieces Every Step. There's this little parable um, about a this this boy g- wants to know the meaning of life, and he goes to this king, and he says, "What's the meaning of of life?" And and the king gives him a spoon and fills the spoon with um, oil and he says go take a walk around the palace and and look at all of the rooms and take in all of the gorgeous artwork and the uh, the, the the gardens and and look at everything but don't spill the oil and so the boy just he says okay and he he takes a walk around the palace and all the while he's being very slow and cautious not looking up from the oil because he doesn't want to spill it and he gets back to the king and the king says so wh- what did you enjoy about the palace what did you uh what have you learned and he was like oh i i don't know i was just so focused on not spilling this oil and and the and the king says all right well um <coughs> are you okay yeah i'm fine fine okay. fine so the king says, "Oh well, you missed the the point of the lesson. So so go look again, but th- you know, mm-hmm. be sure to take in all of the wonders that the palace has to offer." And so he goes, and this time he's looking at everything, and he's taking it all in, and seeing fountains, and gorgeous paintings, and sculptures, and 
just ornate decorative rooms and he comes back to the king and he says oh my god this w- it was incredible it was wonderful mm-hmm. like this is a beautiful palace and the king says yes but there's no oil in the spoon you spilled the oil and so what it what it means i think is that you have to have a balance between um you know um keeping an eye on on the oil on your work mm-hmm. on the things that you need to take care of and, and and but not letting that distract you from from the beauty that life has to offer so i think with what, jesus what Christ, the laundry to the monster boys clothes was it covered in oil no i think he just probably spilled it as he was walking he was holding it out in front of him i think it didn't get on his clothes i don't think so okay my, okay my point is um you know, with Jesus Christ, the laundry monster, I think mm-hmm. he is sort of the embodiment of that parable. Okay, so. So he doesn't want people to be bogged down with laundry, but when he takes it away, then people are like, wait, where's my shirt? And it's like, well, if you had been taking care of yourself and doing your laundry, you would know where the shirt was, but because you just sort of left it there on the floor. Okay. And I'm going to politely voice my concern with this aspect of the Jesus character. Christ, the laundry monster's here. I love that part of the character. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if he's punishing people, especially people that are seem to be going through some Not punishing, trial, teaching them. I know, but teaching, it's, it's tough love a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I kind of want this character. I was thinking if you this look at is the more admini- like a- If you look at where we are right now politically, oh, yeah. with who we have, it, with this administration, mm-hmm. I don't think, I, I, I just don't see how you could be opposed to, like who who are you, f- I mean- I, I, don't, I don't think I want this character to- Are you to- pro-Trump? I didn't say that. Okay. I think I think this character could be an evergreen, kind of like a Santa Claus. Like Santa Claus is not born out of any political time. Are you period. fucking kidding me? What? You don't think that Santa Claus is political at all? No, I think he's just kind of a, a cherubic, cheerful old man that makes toys. Do you know how Santa Claus started? No. It was okay. Do you know what communism is? Yeah. Do you, and you know... You know the laundry is bad. <laughs> okay. Um, I I don't even ha- I, I I can't believe... I, don't, I I'm too angry to explain it to you right no, now. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you angry. Well, you did. I mean, I feel like this character probably predates communism in some ways. Santa Claus? That's how s- communism got started. What? Santa Claus went around t- giving he didn't get just give presents the way we know him today uh-huh. he would take things away and replace them with uh, uh, so that everybody had had exactly the same things so is there an element of jesus christ the laundry monster that is communist absolutely not you're missing the point of what i'm saying you are just like the president no i'm not <laughs> yeah, just you are. like the president your ears are closed I, I'm not just like the president. This uh, everything's got to be so politically correct these days. Yeah. Um, well, what uh, I mean, if you're not if you're not commenting or you're not, uh, you know, contributing to the dialogue, then then why even create art? If you're just joining Jesus us in the Christ. podcast for laundry, um, we're creating a a laundry mascot that's just supposed to be fun and and cheerful for everybody. And well, there, he's not overtly political, but it needs Scola. to be. Uh, somewhat you can political. See this is outrageous. Wings I'm sick to my stomach. Available on DVD right now. Uh, uh, Cole's helping us come up Jesus with... Jesus Christ, the laundry monster's here. So, Jesus Christ, the laundry monster, takes all the laundry. Does he grow bigger? No. Where does it go? Does he take it somewhere? It's, it incinerates, like, in his stomach. There's a furnace. <laughs> so there's a a fire aspect of him. Yeah, because there there needs to be union workers in his stomach. Okay, this is a real curveball here with this 
this, this characterization. I, are they like parasites? Are they small union workers or are they oh full size God. humans? Even even suggesting that union workers no. are parasites? No, no, no. That's not what are I, you I meant. To I this? mean, you you are implying that these union workers are in the monster's stomach. Yeah, because you know they're part of a union and they've agreed to the terms of this job and they're getting benefits from this job. So what, what what is Jesus Christ's what what is his financial backing like that he's able to support these? Because this seems like at most it would be some sort of government. Yeah. So the government pays for... Yes. So you're saying President Trump pays for Jesus Christ the Laundry Monster. I'm saying the taxpayers pay for, pay for Jesus I Christ feel like the Laundry Monster. If Trump was looking at the budget, you know, he's cutting everything. He's going to cut Jesus Well, that's Jesus why we need this character right now. That's why Jesus Christ the Laundry Monster is so important because there is too much at stake right now. I'm just... I'm not trying to poke holes in it, but I, you know, what I am trying to poke holes. Who's 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 funding this monster? The taxpayers. The imaginary taxpayers. The. Mind if I take my pants off again? I'm very hot. Your pants are already off. Not those pants. I would prefer that you kept your underwear on. And just getting worked up. Yeah, but it's okay. I've given you gold with this character. I'm not saying, and look, this is still 50 50. We're going to take this character to the moon and back. Yeah, okay. So, where do you see this character existing? Is it, is it in web, web content, maybe a feature film, a Saturday morning cartoon? Uh, yeah, all of it. All of it? Yeah. Where would we start, though? live action sort of thing where we get celebrities like I think like James what, Franco talking to Jesus Christ no I think what would happen is we would need some sort of um Edward Snowden type you know hacking into all media so that the first episode of this show would be on every radio station on every Every computer, um, every television, every movie screen. I feel like this is something that could have possibly happened when there was only a couple hundred TV radio stations. You don't think that you don't think that there are people out there capable of hacking into every broadcast platform? I, I honestly <laughs> you got don't. another thing coming, buddy. What? <laughs> you got another thing coming. Well, why would they do it for Jesus Christ the Laundry Monster? Because it's an important political, moral. I'm parable. not saying it's not important. Yeah, I'm just saying it's. It why seems would they like do it? Well, we would have to pay them. We we have to pay them. Well, yeah, they're you know these guys won't Cole, do it for free. I don't have this kind of money. It's not. We can raise. We no. can start from the ground floor, build this character up slow, grassroots. Don't you you so don't have start any a donors Twitter, at all? Start a Twitter for Jesus Christ the Laundry Monster. We need three billion dollars minimum. Fans to can start. interact with the character for free, and we could just spend our time. No, we need three billion to get this thing up and into everyone's homes. I feel like if if people are maybe listening to their favorite radio station or watching their favorite show, mm-hmm. and then this Laundry Monster interrupts, I think people are gonna, gonna think, love it. I think they're gonna think. I, mean, I, f- I feel like that's something like Lex Luthor would do. That's not a real person, though. Well, or or it's or so, some villain. It's like some, you know, th- that's what Donald Trump does. Not that Donald Trump is a villain. Jesus so. Christ, the laundry. I mean, imagine you're sitting, you're watching whatever it is you're watching, and all of a sudden it's it starts. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Jesus Christ, the laundry monster's here. I mean, I'm, I, look, I have goosebumps. Okay. Um, does... Let's move on. Does Jesus Christ have a significant other? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's maybe flesh that character out. Perhaps I could play the significant other. No. Or you. No, I don't think I think the 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 sign I think Jesus Christ's significant other 
it's got to have they, they they have to have some sort of um what's the word i'm looking for joie de vivre yeah like they they need they like i i'd say pink the Has color that, uh, the the singer oh uh yeah i think pink i like some of the voiceover work she's done no i think the films. i think I think it should be pink. Okay. Like, like Jesus Christ, the laundry monster is engaged to marry the singer pink. No, I've, I but was I thinking don't pink think could that be the she voice could play of this, like maybe a secondary laundry monster. Maybe no, no, a no, pink no, 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 no. It has to be pink. Like maybe the there singer. is some, some, some red gut stuck in the wash and now she's pink. I think all of her clothes are pink. I think it has to be the singer pink. No, I'm sorry. I know it has to be the singer Pink. I, you know, I the, I'm yeah. the one that brought Pink into the conversation. But as a, a sort of a co- a cultural commentary on, on 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 the culture of celebrity. Okay. It has to be. Yeah. I, f- I feel like Pink's celebrity is engaged, and, and he's engaged to marry her. Okay. So Jesus Christ is. I mean that that'll be a fun thing to build to. And she's always like. When are we gonna get married? So she's doing a voice. She's well, she's not. Pink won't play her. I know she's very busy right now. I'm just getting texts from her right now that are saying she can't do you it. You asked Pink already? Yes. Without consulting me? You are the one that brought her up. Well, I didn't. So I think we could get Cindy Lauper to play her. So Cindy Lauper. I mean. So she would. Cut, when are you gonna? When are we? When's the? You said you're gonna marry me, but when? When can we have the wedding? A, I gotta say, Cindy Lauper's pretty good choice. Yeah. To play older Pink. Nah, just the same age as she is now. But so yeah. it's always sort of she's, about. She's like, geez, Louise, you and your laundry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And she kind of, she's always, maybe there's like some f- fun physical thing for her to do. Cause you know, I hate when people, ha- you have these celebrity guests and they never get to do anything, you know? So we could give her like, you know, those yogurt cups with the granola on top. Yes. So she can never really, she can never open the granola to put in the yogurt or it's either that or she, or the granola has already been mixed in and it's soggy and she's like, ugh. <laughs> So she's always futzing around with the yogurt. With the yogurt and the granola cup. Uh-huh. And uh, and that's just sort of her thing. And people, like, every time it comes, you know, she walks on onto the screen and people are like, oh, she doesn't have her yogurt with her. And then all of a sudden she pulls it up and everyone goes nuts. Here's, so Pink, mm-hmm. played by Cindy Lauper, mm-hmm. is the girlfriend of the laundry monster. Mm-hmm. But she's unsupportive of his not unsupportive she's just no 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 wa- let's eager to let's go let's run with this she's unsupportive of the laundry monster's obsession with laundry he's not obsessed with laundry that's what i've been saying okay okay he's just trying to do right by himself and by the tragedy that he experienced early on in life mm-hmm. and he's no, just no he loved it by the way he loved watching the people die. That's another thing that that's another thing about him is he likes watching people die. So he goes around stealing people's laundry and incinerating them after mm-hmm. inspired by the death of a three year old child. And her father. And her father. The PE yes. teacher. The PE teacher. I'm sure the kids in class were pretty bummed out about that. Yeah. And he sort of liked watching them upset about that too, the laundry monster. So he like visited. He looked through the window, like in the first episode. the The whole class is crying about it's like um, an assembly. their beloved teacher. Yeah, the the principal comes and says, "As you may or may not know, last night, Mr. Emson uh, died uh, in a car crash with his daughter." And, and he's listening. And he's the laundry listening. monster. Yeah, we Pressed pan over against... to the window, and he's like, his eyes are just lit. His or he doesn't eyes? have eyes, but his yeah. like his aura is just lit up. He's got a big smile on his face, just waiting for these children to cry. 
Because when they cry, that means they loved him, you know? And he gets... And he loves love. I was trying to draw some parallels between the... Um... And then all of a sudden, when are we going to get married? And he's like, shh. Cindy Lauper, like, ride on the monster's back? No, she's just always barging in. So she doesn't like what he's doing. And she just wants to get married. Why doesn't he marry her? He is going to eventually, but he's busy, you know? Yeah. And she's, oh, could somebody help me open this yogurt? So, uh... Cole, you got any shows to plug? I'll um, I'm I'm performing at Joe's Pub January second, third, and fifth. Congrats! Thank you. And um, on on your website, it's the all six seasons of Wings. Um, I I'm I'm just in the middle ones. Okay, so I wasn't the in the first ones. or in the last one. But maybe catch up on the first two seasons to know where the other characters stand. Sure. All right, thanks so much for being on the show. And I guess thanks. check out Jesus Christ the Laundry Monster. Well, it'll you don't have to check it out. It'll be it'll whenever you're doing whatever you're doing, it'll just show up. Like a me, it's just a mass media takeover yeah. with this character. Mm-hmm. And uh I guess we'll have to work out the logistics of that, but thanks thanks so much for coming on That'll the show. That'll be fine. Thank you. Please um please pull your pants up and um <laughs> I'll walk <laughs> you out. <laughs> They slid off. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook. I have only one question for you. Are you going to listen to left-handed radio? If yes, listen to left-handed radio. If not, why not?